Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope, and today we're going to do our very best to teach you how to play one specific role in Vast the Mysterious Manor. We're going to be diving into the Paladin. Uh, we have a overview video yeah. about the entire game as a concept, as a whole. We're also going to have character-specific videos for all seven included yeah. roles in Vast. Including the, the expansion, manner. by the way. Including the expansion. And some of the components we'll be using kind of to display things will be with the expansion pieces included. Mm -hmm. So if you only have the core game, you may have cardboard tokens instead of some miniatures. That's the main difference, yeah. right? So the, so the steps we're gonna follow in this format, the format where they'll be able to like have key points to skip to. We're going to go over an overview of the character, then we're going to go through components and setup. Okay. Then we're going to touch on the, the general character's flow. So how this board sequences down. We're gonna dive a little bit more specifically after that into the different components of this board. Specific actions or specific abilities that might be a one-off thing that you're doing mm -hmm. throughout the campaign. And then finally, we'll do our very best to touch on how our character, the Paladin specifically, will be interacting with the board state as a whole. There will be encounters and situations that you come across during the game that resolve slightly differently to mm -hmm. what we can display here, and that's because there's a lot of variation. For core reference, we are teaching you the standard variant of the game. Uh, with different player counts, with yep. different characters included, uh, there'll be variations on some win conditions, some resolved actions, things like that. Let's uh, let's dive into the Paladin. Can you tell me a little bit about the overview of the Paladin? Who are we? And uh, what is the win and lose condition when it comes to exploring this manor? Yeah, so the Paladin is here to bring some holy justice onto some horrible demons that have spawned within this manor. Mm. That is the spider. So our condition for winning is going to be to destroy that spider before it escapes. You destroy the spider by dealing five wounds. Each mm -hmm. wound is connected to a, a little mini spider. Uh, which we will touch in depth on the spider specific video. Yeah. Five wounds. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. How do we lose? We lose by getting our health all the way down to zero. However, the only character that can actually hurt us are the skeletons. The skeletons are going to be scattering and running through this dungeon, doing their very best to block us and drain our health. Mm -hmm. There are other ways to lose, since every character has their own win conditions. But mainly, we're hunting the spider, we're watching out for the skeletons. Yeah. Let's go ahead and dive into components and general setup. And the easiest way for us to do this is I'm gonna follow this chart and you're going to uh, signify or demonstrate the things that Let's we're checking off. Uh, the paladin board should be in front of you. The paladin figure should be on the entrance tile. The uh, health cube should be on the number seven space on your health track. Your grit dial should be set to zero you should have a total of eight light tokens, five fury tokens, and the pillar of light figurine. You should collect seven hero cubes. Three of those should be placed on your unassigned hero cubes box on your board. You'll then shuffle the seven treasure cards and place them uh, in a deck near the manor board. So a little aside here, the treasure cards will be controlled by the manor itself. They're for us, but they don't get dealt to us until the manor gives them. Find the Illuminate and Vigor favor cards and place those face up near you and then shuffle the remaining seven favor cards into a single deck. So that's that's the setup. Uh, one pretty quick, straightforward. Pretty straightforward. One quick note, the one thing on this board that relates directly to the Paladin is going to be this entrance tile. Uh, that is going to have a different color on the back. It's going to have a red E on it, mm -hmm. and it always faces so that the wall is leading into the dungeon. So the two rooms should exit to the sides, the yep. left and the right. One of the traits that's important on the Paladin that I'll go ahead and mention uh, is formidable. Your figure is not removed when hit. Each time you are hit by a skeleton, you lose one health instead of being removed. Other characters, if you saw our general overview video, respawn differently when damage is dealt or yep. when they're hit. The Paladin specifically never respawns. And like we said, don't worry about it. Just focus on you. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, let's go ahead and go into the character's actions. So can you walk us through uh, stage one, two, and three here on this board? Yeah. Now an important note, each one of the player boards are going to have this kind of sequential series of events. Once you understand them, they're easy to follow, and there's no hidden language. Yeah. This board will tell you exactly what you can and can't do. 
So let's find that out. Yeah, so first you're gonna collect your hero cubes. So usually hero cubes might be dispersed across your board. Mm. However, you're gonna start the game with only three. After you collected your hero cubes and you have them in hand, you're gonna move on to the second phase of your turn, which is take actions by placing hero cubes. So essentially here, you're gonna have different areas that where you're gonna be able to locate these cubes. And every time you locate a cube, it's going to give you a buff which is going to make that particular action more efficient. Mm -hmm. It could be something from preparing, getting stronger, and, and having preparing yourself for eventual attacks, mm -hmm. or attacking. So preparing will strengthen you by one and strengthen your defense by one. Yeah. So it's a single stat buff to both of those mm -hmm. mechanics. Then if we want to move across the manor, we might want to sprint. So mm -hmm. sprinting allows us to move one to two spaces, but only in lit tiles. Mm -hmm. And okay. only in a tile that doesn't result in an encounter. Mm -hmm. So if you standard rule in, in the game of Vast, if you enter a tile with another creature, unless your specific character says something different, you always engage in a attack. Yep. Resulting your attack versus their defense, mm -hmm. which is where prepare comes in. Exactly. Sprint cannot cause that. No, not at all. That's the third and most complex possible action, which is Crusade. Yeah, so Crusade, once you play something here, note that you can only move zero or one space in order to do that Crusade. And whenever you do a Crusade, you're gonna flip the tile or you're going to do the action and you're gonna resolve everything in a particular order. Mm -hmm. We can go into that a little bit more into detail once we're done, but essentially a Crusade will be revealing a tile, attacking any figures that are on it, activating any specialty elements within that tile, and then finally collecting treasure. Yeah, and that'll probably be your most heavily used uh, or most focused uh, action throughout the game. Mm -hmm. An important note on this sequence of events. If, for instance, we moved into a tile that resulted in a attack, uh, you know, a combat action, you can place cubes in any order uh, as you go. So if you didn't have anything to prepare, you moved into a tile where you were engaged with a creature, you can immediately place any remaining hero cubes you have up into the prepare action to uh, give yourself an immediate buff. Yeah, and that's pretty much one of the most quintessential yeah. elements about the Paladin, because yeah. he has that adaptability in any circumstance. He needs to be able to adjust to what he's encountering. Mm -hmm. When we touch on light and fury tokens as well, you'll see that same uh, kind of anytime mechanic come back into play, but we'll tell you a little bit more about those when we get into specifics. Now, what's the third and final step of this board so, after you've placed all of your hero cubes? So the third thing you're going to do, and this is going to be a conditional mm. element on your turn, if you don't get to hit the spider, mm. you gain a fury. And hitting is very important because you can attack a spider, but not actually damage it. That's gonna be the end of kind of the basic steps of the character's actions. You're gonna be assigning cubes, moving throughout the dungeon, and doing your best to hunt down the spider. Let's go back through these and talk about specifics as we come across them. Yeah. Um, so let's look at the top here. Your strength and your defense. Mm -hmm. uh, how do those, how are those involved in the actual gameplay of Vast itself? Yeah, so let's go ahead and use one of the most basic uh, enemy figures in the game, which are going to be... The Poltergeist. The Poltergeist. Yeah. They'll be spawning throughout the board when you uncover certain map tiles. Mm -hmm. They're kind of obstacles. Yeah. And victory points. And other things, depending <laughs> on who you are, but again, don't worry about it. So Poltergeist start the game and will always have one defense. So before you even move into a space and there's a figure occupying it, you must exceed the yeah. defense value of that figure. So for example, if we have the Poltergeist here, if we, we one knew defense, one was there, mm -hmm. we could move into this space as long as we had buffed our attack by two. Yep. The simplest way to do that is to prepare actions. Yep. Fury, which we'll get to a little bit more in depth later, will also be a token that can, for one specific crusade, buff your attack by one. Yep. So there would be a way to vary that slightly. Now, what happens if, let's say, this tile spawned a poltergeist and I crusaded into it? That means I was moving, I was going to resolve an attack, but currently I, my attack does not exceed the defense. Let's say we tied. Well, if you tied, unfortunately, you're gonna have to move back to where you came from. Yep. Okay. So remember, we're, you're going to go into a sequence. First, you're going to reveal a tile, you're going to attack a figure, and if you don't get to finish that sequence, then you don't get to do the next things. Yep. Uh, moving down to sprint. Yeah, so let's actually give a visual example sure. of how this would work. So let's suppose that we have a few rooms and we wanted to go ahead and sprint across them. So once, if we were to place our cubes on that sprint action, we'd be able to move, as it says here, one to two spaces without any encounters and in lit rooms. So, 
If we were to move here, you'd only be able to move up to this symbol there because there's an encounter waiting for you on the next room. Well, that was already two spaces, mm -hmm. so you could move two spaces straight. If this poltergeist was one room farther, or if he was right next to us, we would be able to move as far as we could, but in order to engage with him or any other figure on the board, we have to use our crusade. Yeah. So moving down to the most used thing, let's go sequentially through everything that'll result from a crusade action. Yeah. And what I'll, and what we'll do is that as we're going through each one, Jesse's going to go ahead and look for specific tiles that are going to be specific to the paladin. For example, the shrine. He and just signed things. me up for a whole lot of extra work. I know, <laughs> it's what I'm best for. All right. So whenever revealing a tile, and remember this is generally a overall game term, so this is something that you just have to be familiar with as you're going into Vass. Whenever you reveal a tile, you're going to flip this face up and as soon as you do that as a paladin, you're going to, you're going to get two grit. Yeah. Grit in the paladin, and the, I think this is a good moment to talk about this a little bit, is going to be your experience. Yeah. It's the, like leveling up throughout the course of yeah, your campaign. The more grit you have, the better it's going to be. Mm -hmm. But we can go more in depth to this a little bit later. It will unlock certain things mm -hmm. uh, as you gain experience. Yeah. We'll dive into that kind of dial here in just a bit. So the very first thing you're going to do when revealing a tile is that you're going to flip it face up. When you flip it face up, you're going to notice that there are different corners or different wall elements, graphics on that tile. You must make sure that wherever you are coming from, there is an opening towards that. So for example, in this tile, all sides are open, so you could place it in any direction you want. But there are going to be instances where, for example, you're gonna have particular openings here. So you're only allowed to use one or the other in order to go through that room. Okay, so it's up to you to decide how that happens. So the next thing that's gonna happen, and this is always, you're going to place a dark tile on any spaces that are open. So that means any doorways that are like that, you're always gonna place another dark tile there. They're completely randomized. And different characters interact with the crypt tiles, the dark tiles, and lit tiles in different ways, but... But don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just forget it. Along with that, when you reveal a tile, there's going to be different types of tiles throughout the game. Mm -hmm. We will touch on the shrine, which is your specific tile, uh, a little bit lower in this graph. The other potential tiles are gonna be poltergeists, mm -hmm. where a poltergeist will spawn and you'll have an encounter. Uh, you will have pits, which are related specifically to the skeletons. They can pop up and chase you from those. We have blood, which is related to the spider. If you move into that tile, the spider will be annoyed because you'll remove that token. Uh, and we have a treasure chest, which if you move into, will spawn a treasure chest and then give you a treasure chest. Uh, or the manor specifically will draw two and give you one. Yeah, so essentially imagine that whenever you reveal a tile as a paladin, you are stepping head first mm -hmm. into that space and you have to redo and reveal everything that's going on in that area. Whatever's possible. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and continue moving down. We just revealed a tile, we've crusaded into it. Uh, it could have been any one of these. Then what do we do next? So after that, if there's a figure, either because it spawned immediately or there was an existing figure there, you must attack it. Yep. Okay, so we've already touched this. So if you attack a figure, you make sure that you understand what their defense value is, yep. and you'll take any cubes that you might have available currently and place them in that prepare action in order for you to succeed and continue venturing into the room. Whatever it takes for you to accomplish that goal. And that and, and that's an important note because you might either use fury, mm -hmm. you might use some uh, cards that you've gained and other items that you've made yourself stronger with. So it just depends on your current board state. And you could also be encountering and engaging with non-player character entities such as the eggs. Mm -hmm. We'll dive into those when we get to the dial in just a bit. Yeah. Next we have using the shrine. Like I said, this is is your specific uh, kind of favorite tile. Yeah. So if I move in, I've crusaded into or crusaded on a current shrine tile, what does that result in? So the shrine is gonna give you different things. Essentially, it's you praying to your gods to try and give you strength. Try to let me win this game. Please, please. Uh, so you'll either do one of two things. You will gain fury or a light token, mm. or you're gonna be able to discard what's called a favor card. Yeah in order for you to draw three cards and then keep one of them. So this is a good time for us to talk about Fury, Light, and Favor cards specifically. Let's start with Fury. Fury essentially is going to be a resource that you're going to be able to employ depending on cards that you have in your tableau. Yeah, okay. well depending on your Favor cards. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
And based on whatever that favor card is, you're going to be able to take that fury from your pool and then expend it in order to do that action. And light's gonna follow the same rules. Mm -hmm. It's a token that's dictated by the rules on your favor cards. Now, an important note, you always start the game with two favor cards, Vigor and Illuminate. Mm -hmm. And these will have the basic rules for Fury and Light. Another important note, this little lock symbol down here in the bottom corner, you can never discard or trade these for other favor cards. Never. As you accumulate favor cards, you can hold them in your hand, just like you can hold treasure. You can play them down to give yourself an extra ability at any point, and then they stay on your tableau, but these can never be cycled out. Correct. So, specifically, starting, starting, gear. Uh, we have Vigor. That means you can spend any number of Fury tokens to gain any number of strength for one Crusade action. Next, you could spend one Fury to place a Breach on a wall on your tile. That means you remove a wall so you can kind of open a pathway for yourself. And this is the Breach token. That would be the Breach token. Yep. So, so to give an example of that, just in case, so this would actually be a room that you would never be able to access. There's a wall here that you can't cross, but there's a treasure chest in there, so I want to get there. I really want to get I there. I really want to get there. So how would we do that? You would spend one Fury. Uh, you'd take uh, one Fury. It's a free action at any point. Mm -hmm. You'd spend that. You'd open up that wall, and then you'd be able to do a move action or a crusade action into that space. Uh, next, it comes to Illuminate. Light tokens are going to be gathered in different ways. Anytime you do a successful hit on a creature, you're going to be able to gain a light token. Mm -hmm. And then anytime you use a shrine, you could gain either a fury or a light token as yep. well. Uh, and then there might be other gear cards or modifiers that give you some light buffs, but they'll be specific in letting you know that happens. Your starting action or your starting gear with, with light. You can spend one light to place a lamp, which is on the other side of your light tokens, uh, on a tile or an adjacent visible tile. Each tile may hold one lamp. Lamps are important. They stop the skeletons in their tracks. So if you're currently being chased, you can drop a lamp behind you and you can halt them for maybe an no action. No spooky or a crawlies turn. for you. Exactly. So. You can also spend one light to remove a web from your tile or an adjacent tile. Webs stop your movement. Yep. So if you want to clear the path, you can use the torch to do so. If you want to stop the skeletons, you can use a lamp to do so. Yep. So that's your basic action for light and favor. And you can use these at any time, depending on where you are or the circumstances of your yep. turn. And the, the last action you can take with a shrine, which you touched on a little bit, is you could uh, discard one favor card, draw three favor cards, and keep one. And so, and to explain a little bit what favor cards are, it varies. They can be anything from permanent boons, mm -hmm. Um, new abilities that you're going to be able to take on your turn or give you new possible venues to expend your resources on. Now, this is a good time to hop over towards this Grit Tracker here because mm -hmm. the question is, if I can't discard Vigor and Illuminate, how do I discard a card at a shrine to gain others or cycle through that deck? And the answer is going to be over here on your experience points. Over here on this side, it states that I can get one Hero Cube or lose one hero cube if I cross a few specific points. Grit number seven, grit num number 18, 32, and 41. There's a total of seven potential hero cubes, and as you level up, those are abilities or actions that unlock. Importantly, you find a extra favor card or lose an extra favor card whenever you cross 13 or 25. Every time you cross those numbers, you'll see a little symbol on your dial here indicating that you gain something. And then you'll draw three, you'll keep one, and discard the rest. Discard's important. That deck doesn't get recycled until you've already passed through it. So if you're hunting for something specific, you may have to use a shrine multiple mm -hmm. times. Uh, how you get grit. Good point to touch on. Yeah. You reveal a tile, you always get two. You destroy a poltergeist, one of these little purple guys, you'll always gain three. Mm -hmm. You refuse to collect a treasure uh, that the manor has handed you. It's going to give you five grit and then you destroy a nasty spider egg. You don't want those around anywhere. You're gonna get another five grit as well. Those are your basic ways to level up. Yeah, and so one of the most important things about grit, in case you were wondering, you do get the benefit as soon as you get the grit. So that means if you're going into a tile and you know that you're gonna have an enemy there, but you don't have enough strength to take them down, as soon as you enter, you get two grit, you might have the exact cube you needed to take down that enemy. Yeah, there there's, could be a nice sequence of events there, so pay attention to it. When you unlock, could be important. And then the last action here, beyond use a shrine, is collect treasures. 
What mm -hmm. happens and how do you collect treasures? So let's use this tile as an example. So usually whenever you reveal a treasure tile, you'll place a treasure there. And when you enter that space and you do a crusade, you're going to be able to get that treasure and e equip it essentially. So you're going to have one of two options. The manor is going to draw cards. From those two cards, they're going to make a choice. They're going to discard the card that they cannot let you have. And they'll probably give you the lesser of the two. Possibly. So once the manor gives you that card, you're going to have to make a choice. You're either going to, as Jesse already stated, gain five grit. Oh, but I want these wing boots so bad. Or you keep the treasure. Yeah. And if you keep the treasure, you can keep it in your hand until you decide to play it down. That could be important for kind of turning points in the game. If you play these winged boots, each time you spend sprint, you may move up to four spaces instead of two. Well, if I've had that in reserve, I play that down on a turn where I need to get the whole way across the map to hit the spider, and the spider thinks I can only move two or three. Yep. This could, this could kind of shift the tide a little bit. And if you're wondering, yes, you can continuously accumulate these cards and make your paladin even more awesome. Yeah, there's no hand limit and there's no tableau limit. It's based mm -hmm. on how many you're able to pull and how many you're able to find. Yeah. So the, the last thing we want to touch on here, I think we've gone over kind of the overview, the specific stats. Um, you will want to make sure you reference the rulebook from time to time if you have any specific questions. And remember, it doesn't parse words. If it says it, it says it exactly as it is. And your cards will always take precedent over yeah. rules. Cards take precedent over player board. Player board takes precedent over general core game rules. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about this board here, um, specifically tied to things that we might encounter um, in, in your experience. So one thing that I can say is the pits that pop up uh, and these outer tiles where the skeletons can run, it's important for you to be, be aware of how the skeletons move across the board. They're going to be spawning and popping up uh, in these pits or on the edge of the map and trying to surround you. Mm -hmm. They get a buff in power if they are uh, around or have tokens around your paladin. So avoiding situations where you're um, in the center of, of the skeletons is a good way for you to avoid losing the game. Mm -hmm. What comes down when it comes to playing against the spider? So the spider at the beginning of the game is very likely going to run away from you as much as they can. Why? Because technically they can't hurt you. They can only draw blood. So very likely you're going to try and have to rush to the spider before it can become stronger. Mm -hmm. So your objective at the beginning of the game is to try and forge a path through this labyrinth to try and make it to the spider and hit it as early as possible. On the way though, pay attention to opportunities to up your grit, up your treasure. Mm -hmm. um, peppering the spider and pestering it, I think is probably more important than just going hard in 100% of the time. Early game is going to be buffing yourself a little bit while you get to the spider and then you need to focus in and do some precision strikes. And remember this, the spider will be more efficient at the beginning of the game because she can divide into five separate figures. Yep. So taking out those figures and taking out that health early makes on- Makes it harder for her to manipulate the board and move around. Yep. Uh, I think that's kind of the overview of the paladin. We're gonna yep. reset up and dive into the spider next. So if you have a friend or you're playing that, make sure you hop on over to, to take a look at how those different characters work. This is a new format we're playing with. Mm -hmm. So if you've made it to this point in the video, we appreciate you sticking it through. Uh, hopefully this has been informative. Feel free to leave comments in the comment section down below, letting us know if there is a better structure we can follow, something that would help you understand a game that is kind of as complex to teach mm -hmm. as this one is. We thought a conversational pattern would be maybe the most accessible way for us to learn. Yeah. And we hope that was the case for you. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. You joining the community and bringing more eyes to kind of the content we're making allows us to continue making uh, content like this. And it lets companies like Leader Games who provided this copy of the game to continue doing that so that we can continue bringing good quality content yeah. in your direction. Whatever you do though, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Thanks guys.